In the USA, ghost towns are primarily associated with the Old West. The idea is mostly that a town sprung up next to a mine or as part of some other form of speculation, and then eventually the business opportunity dried up and everyone had to move away. Around the world, the reality is very different. Communities have been abandoned for reasons that have nothing to do with economic busts, sometimes so quickly that personal belongings are left strewn about the house. Let's trot the globe to those abandoned places that are often as fascinating as they are tragic. Number 10. Bodie. Bodie was named in honor of W.S. Bodie, a miner who found gold in 1859 and thus began a minor gold rush years after California's most famous gold rush had died down. The town was founded in 1861, its namesake having frozen to death the prior winter. Bodie became the site of its own rush in 1875 when a mine collapse revealed a rich vein of gold. While Bodie is hardly as famous as San Francisco or Los Angeles today, for a time it looked like it might go on to be a major metropolis, since in 1880 it was the third largest city in California with 10,000 people. It was so cash rich that there were 200 restaurants and 65 saloons. It was also a rough crowd and there were rumors that the town endured six shootings a week. By the 1890s, the gold supply and population had already begun to dwindle. Adding to its troubles, a fire broke out in 1892 and burned down much of the town. By 1917, Bodie was so dead that its rail lines were raided for scrap. Then, in 1932, another major fire burned down much of the town. Officially, the town's mine was killed off in 1942, when all mining not essential for World War II was banned. Still, in 1962, since the town was cleared out so completely, it was designated a preserved historical site, which ironically turned it into a tourist boom town again, with as many as a thousand visitors per day in the summer. The winter, though, is a very different story. Weather gets so severe in Bodie that in 1999 it was the coldest recorded spot in America 71 times, the largest number of anywhere that year. Even the hardiest snowmobiles will hesitate to put up with that. Number 9. Ordeur Seglon In the wake of the Allied Normandy landings on June the 6th, 1944, the Wehrmacht massively stepped up its operations to put down French partisan activity. Ordeur Seglon was one time target in the sights of the 2nd Panzer Division, whose leader was freshly arrived from the Eastern Front, where standard procedure in the wake of a partisan attack was to kill thousands of civilians in reprisal, whether or not they had anything to do with the attack. On June 10, 1944, the SS arrived in the town, where the population was 650. Roughly half of them were newly arrived refugees. The soldiers gathered the population in the town square, then placed the women and children into the town church and set it on fire, including throwing in grenades. All but eight of the other residents were gunned down, with the rest of the village being looted before being put to the torch. Unusually for World War II atrocities, there was a subsequent public outrage that the Wehrmacht attempted to address with a farce of an investigation and a show trial, which inevitably concluded that the atrocity had been justified. In 1946, the mostly destroyed town was set to be preserved as a historical site by the French government. This event became so prominent that references were made to it during the Nuremberg trials. Even as late as 2013, the German government was considering reopening the cases against the SS officers involved. Number 8. Krakow More than 1,400 years is a good run for any community. Krakow, a village carved out of rock in the southern Italian region of Basilicata, was founded in the 6th century AD. It endured such crises as raids and the Black Death. What ultimately did it in was a series of earthquakes and landquakes through the 1950s and 1960s that left the village utterly unstable. Stable. The government wasn't willing to risk the roughly 1,800 citizens being crushed or plummeting to their deaths and move them out, a difficult process which left many of them essentially refugees in tent cities for years. Given that the village is still there more than half a century later, that may have seemed premature, though who knows how much more wear and tear those citizens going about their business would have added to the terrain over the years. The feeling is further reinforced by the fact that the village hosts biennial festivals, not to mention that it was judged sufficiently safe that movie productions such as The Passion of the Christ primarily took place there. Who knows how many of the displaced residents would like to move back now. Number 7. Hashima Island Considering that it is situated off the coast of the city of Nagasaki, it's not surprising that Hashima Island is overshadowed. In the 1950s, the island was revealed to be a rich coal mine, and it attracted miners willing to go 2,000 feet under the earth. It was such a business hotspot that it attracted 5,000 people, which might not sound like many, but considering that it's a 16-acre island, that made it, for a time, the most densely populated location on earth. 
It should also be noted that many of the miners were prisoners of war from Korea and the UK. It wasn't until 1974 that the coal mine went dry and, in short order, everyone left the island town to crumble. Not to say that people stopped caring about it. Japan also tried to get the island declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2006. Considering its history of slavery, it was a surprise to many that the application was approved in 2015. Today, the site accepts tourists from Nagasaki, even though much of it is still considered too structurally unsound for visitors. Number 6. Wittenoom Speaking of ghost towns being unsafe, this Western Australian mining town, about 500 miles from Perth, was founded in 1950. At its height, there were roughly 20,000 residents. It lasted until 1966, when it turned out that the asbestos mine that the company town had sprung up to support was filling the air with so many toxins that an estimated 300 miners died from mesothelioma. The government shut down the mine, and the population rapidly dropped off. Despite the evacuations, it wasn't until 2007 that the town was struck from government maps. Despite the risks, as of March 2019, three people insisted on living in the town built for 20,000. What's more, they invite tourists to come and see one of the most contaminated places in the Southern Hemisphere. Some tourists are even willing to go down into the deadly mine shafts. The government had to resort to expensive voluntary property buybacks to clear a few of them out, with costs for unsafe homes rising as high as $325,000, not to mention $50,000 for moving costs. If the threat of death by cancer isn't enough to clear them out, well, money's probably not going to do much better. Number 5. Fordlandia In 1926, Ford Motor Company began work on a community deep in the Amazon basin to grow and harvest its own rubber trees to ensure that the company's rubber supply wasn't vulnerable to trade embargoes. The town housed 5,000 people, of whom 3,000 were laborers. Within eight years, it would be abandoned by Ford. Problems included, but were not limited to the fact that the imported rubber trees were extremely vulnerable to all sorts of caterpillars, snails, and other pests of the Amazon, to the point where workers needed to try and pick them off by hand. Other animals caused more grievous harm, such as when a large river fish bit off the arm of a manager's maid, or when a jaguar carried off a baby. The homes the company constructed were prefabs built for the American Midwest and were much too hot and stuffy for the Amazon. Over the first three years, 28 Ford employees were buried in the town cemetery. Meanwhile, the local workers, being migratory people, were not eager to be tied down to the same grueling work for prolonged periods. Consequently, most would work to receive high wages for a short period and leave, aside from the unhealthy and physically disabled that needed Fordlandia's generous medical care. Fordlandia never came anywhere near its rubber production quota, and in 1945, Ford sold the land back to the government, having lost $7.8 million overall, though some sources put it as high as $20 million, which is the equivalent of $200 million today. The Ford company people were seemingly so eager to leave that they left behind many personal belongings, such as clothing, and really, who could blame them? And if you'd like to learn all about Fordlandia, I've done an entire video on it in a more casual way on my new channel, Business Blaze, which I will link to below. Please go check it out, subscribe if you want to. Let's carry on. Number four, Coleman Scott. When diamonds are so pervasive in a town that all someone has to do is sift through some nearby sand, it's understandable to think that the supply will continue forever. In 1912, the mines in the Namibian city of Coleman Scott produced roughly 12% of the world's diamond supply, which is especially impressive for a community where the population never went above a thousand. What had once been the kind of town that was founded because its namesake, John Coleman, abandoned his ox cart there, was changed forever when a Zakiria Lawala discovered the precious gems while doing railway work in 1908. The boom times ended unusually fast, and by 1930, the town's mines had been picked clean, and by 1956, the last holdout had left the rapidly depleted town. The fact that the town ruins are located in sand dunes is turning out to be a bit of a mixed blessing. On the one hand, they've threatened to bury the town for a long time. On the other, the lack of vegetation and moisture has left the building so well preserved that the paint on some of the walls is still brightly colored. It's well situated to be a long-lasting, if well-hidden, time Time capsule. Number 3. Tynum In December 1943, the 225 residents of this village near the Dorset coast were ordered out because the Royal Armoured Corps Gunnery School wanted to expand its firing range, and this village was in the way. Even after the Great War ended, the UK military claimed that they still needed the land for the firing range, and despite considerable protests from the villagers, they were never allowed to move back. Despite the proximity to the firing range, the most significant form of structural damage the village suffered was a manor house being torn down. So that the parts could be recycled. 
The village was noted as being unusually well preserved and producing a number of rare plants such as dark green fritillary due to a lack of human activity. Not that it is anywhere near perfectly preserved. In 2019, the Military of Defense closed tourist access to seven of the buildings since they had been judged unsafe. Hopefully, the daredevil tourists who went to the asbestos mines don't consider that a challenge. Number 2. Danish Cody For years, Danish Cody had the distinction of being near the only land border between India and Sri Lanka, specifically the southeastern section of Pamban Island. It was also near a location that possessed a bridge significant to Hindu history. It was a highly successful fishing community of several thousand. This success came to an abrupt end in 1964 when the community was hit by a cyclone, a night that left as many as 1,800 people dead. The village was left to the elements, and some of what used to be the village is now submerged as the sand eroded. Because of the village's religious significance, many people wanted to visit the devastated town. Pilgrims that wished to perform a ritual, walking out into the ocean water and saying prayers, have come in groups numbering as many as 1,200. As far as permanent residents are concerned, only a few fishing families cut off from modern amenities want to risk being in the path of another cyclone. Number 1. Pripyat It's the most famous community that was evacuated in the wake of the April 26, 1986 Chernobyl disaster. On the day after the core of the nuclear plant exploded, nearly 50,000 people were cleared out, a bit under half of the people that used to live in the thousand square miles that comprise the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Due to the abruptness of the evacuation, the city became a particularly eerie place where numerous possessions, even half-eaten meals, were simply left as they lay as the owners left. Since the radiation left the city so unsafe to visit, only the most daring could take pictures of this creepy vista. At least, that's how it used to be. In recent years, Privet has become relatively lively with visitors, many of whom are quite obnoxious about it. The city has had many instances of obscene graffiti that has been added in recent years, along with such curious rituals as people putting lockets around metal poles. Despite its harrowing content, the 2019 HBO Sky co-production Chernobyl actually increased visitors to the city. Even before curious people flocked to Pripyat, there was a group that refused to stay away even after the evacuation. The exclusion zone is currently estimated to house roughly 200 villages. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. As I said earlier, please do check out that new channel I've got going on. It's a bit more casual than this, maybe a bit more fun. If you think that could be a thing for you, it's called Business Blaze. It's linked to below, and thank you for watching.